there's a man on the phone line that thinks that it is not. Because anything is possible in this man's world. As we know his history, that uh, he had like a dollar in his account when Mike and Molly got picked up on CBS, a <laughs> story he told when he was here on the Rich Eisen show in person. And the only question I have for Billy Gardell is what is a bigger rags to riches story? You going from having a dollar in your bank account to Mike and Molly getting picked up, or you winning the Friends of Rich DraftOps.com Celebrity League as you did by sealing the deal in week 17 with a Cam Newton, D'Angelo Williams, Antonio Brown troika. I ask you that, Billy Gardell. Okay, uh, it was seven dollars and eighteen cents. Uh, pardon when me. I got Mike and Molly. Okay. But I have to say, yes. uh, just as big a thrill to beat everybody in your league, mm -hmm. and I would like to now re be referred to as reigning world champion Billy Gardell uh -huh. of the Rich Eisen League. Okay, league. very good. Let me write that down. So it's reigning, reigning world champion of the Rich Eisen League. Okay, Thank so uh, let me let me let me start one more time here. Um, okay, <laughs> here, let me get a mulligan here. Uh, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show is reigning world champion of the Rich Eisen. Uh, celebrity fantasy football league, Billy Gardell. How are you, Billy? Rich, how are you? Good to talk to you. <laughs> uh, on behalf of all New Yorkers... By the, uh, way, I, by the way, having you say that... Yes. It made me feel like an athlete for 32 <laughs> seconds. Thank you. <laughs> Anything I can do, it's all part of the, uh, the, vic the spoils that You're go to the victims. Man. Oh, go ahead. Uh, on behalf of all New Yorkers, uh, what? On behalf of all New Yorkers and yeah. all people uh, who have been rooting for the New York Jets since birth, yeah. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I I feel for you, but, uh, you know, it's a game inches, man. It's a game inches. There's nothing you can do. I've been on the other side of that where we needed somebody to help us and they didn't, or we were going to help somebody get in and we didn't. So, I, you know, I get it. The ball just bounced right for us. Yes. Very, very grateful to the Buffalo Bills this week. Very <laughs> great. I'm going to celebrate by having Buffalo wings during the Steelers-Cincinnati game Saturday. Well, it's in interesting that you bring up food as a way to thank the Bills organization. Well, I, have I, you I... seen me, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have, Billy Gardell. All right. Yes, I have. I didn't get this way looking at food. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason why I bring it up is I don't I'm know if you I'm going to make the guys in the back laugh. That's good. I'm Not... killing two people. No, no. Del Tufo. Mike Del Tufo is... You might have a heart attack. Guy. Mike Del Tufo <laughs> is, our, is our personal laugh track here. At the Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> um, did you see the Permanti brothers I did. sent sandwiches to the Bills front office? I thought that was fantastic and a good show of karma. Okay. Well, they, they, yeah, they said they sent out a tweet. We're sending sandwiches is how they spelled it in their yeah, tweet. Yeah, it's a sandwich. That's how you say that in Pittsburgh. You just want to go downtown and get a sandwich? <laughs> I can meet you down there in about an hour. We'll have a few pops before we got to go back to work and that. Yeah, so they sent the Bills food, some sandwiches. Is a thank you. What well, you, we want, you know, we want to show our gratitude. They helped us get in, you know. What's your, what's your go-to Primani brother sandwich? My go-to Primani is called a jumbo. It's the worst possible thing you could eat for your arteries. <laughs> it's a, it's bologna on the grill, on uh, two pieces of Italian bread with the uh, you got the coleslaw vinegar based, mm -hmm. and then a load of French fries on top of it. Oh. If you fed one to a supermodel, she would explode in front of you. <laughs> I'd love to try that one out. That'd be actually... Yeah, seriously, two bites in her head would pop right off. So, uh, congratulations, by the way. Uh, not Thanks, only are your Steelers making the playoffs, and I'll ask you about that in a second, but you, you did take home the championship um, in the DraftOps.com Friends of Rich Celebrity League that we've been talking about week after week with the pick three week after week. You averaged 62.74 points uh, in your average weekly points, which is uh, it, really impressive. Do you know your your? Would you guess who your most used fantasy player was? If I had to give you a choice, gotta be, gotta be one of the Homer picks. So I'm gonna say probably Antonio. Right? That's correct. You used yeah. one. You used him six weeks, and you used a quarterback for six weeks, Billy. Well, you know when a guy's hot, you gotta let him deal. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? And and I I only switched up from Antonio when Ben got hurt. Okay. When Ben got hurt, I knew that wasn't going to be the same thing. And I knew I, I, Grandma Glassman was just chasing me all year. I was chasing her all year. So once I got right. out in front of her, I had to be very careful about my picks. I just couldn't, couldn't trust Antonio without Ben at that time because I just don't think – our backups were going to get the ball to him as much. So. Yeah, and and, and the, the quarterback, the quarterback he used for six weeks uh, Cam. As, as, was Cam. 
Yep. Well, Cam crushed it in every fantasy league, you know, and and I, I I read about fantasy like a part-time job, and he was just mowing people down. And if a guy's got a hot hand, I'll stay with him. Yeah. So you went Cam and Antonio Brown mostly, and then you swapped around for for running backs. And the best part about all this, not only because I get to call you reigning world champion, uh, <laughs> is you won five thousand dollars, the grand prize for the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's just awesome. That's the best part of this. It's been super fun being a part of. I hope you'll have me next year. Of course. And uh, and and that's that's the great kick of this. I was on Pittsburgh radio this morning and WDVE, and uh, I let them know that I, I won the league. A little, little bragging going on Atta this boy. morning, but uh, it's really nice that that cause is going there. And we had it doubled up too because I think Joe Manganiello was also playing. Yep. For them yeah, too. but Joe finished eleventh. You well, know. you know, Joe's pretty. He's got other stuff to do. You know what? It, it was funny. <laughs> you know, that, when you're pretty, you're doing other stuff. Well, you look like me. You're just reading the sports section. <laughs> you know, Joe Joe finished dead last one week, and the Maybe. week in which he finished dead last was the week that he married Sofia Vergara. So we That's said what he, I'm saying. He, he won the week pretty. anyway. He won the yeah. week anyway. Since yeah, I, I would have told her, listen, you got to relax for a minute because I got to get this running back right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you nervous about Saturday at all, about your actual real Steelers? Well, there's a couple things at play here. I think the level playing field is there. They have home field advantage. Mm -hmm. However, they got quarterback troubles. You got a rookie going into a playoff or a guy that's banged up. Mm -hmm. By the way, incidental. There was no malice meant in that. Mm -hmm. um, we're going in without Le'Veon Bell and possibly without D'Angelo Williams, it looks like. Looks like Tussaud's going to get the call for him. And we're going in there with a not the best secondary in the league, but we're going in there with good linebackers. They're, they have a stout defense. But here's what I rely upon when playing Cincinnati in the playoffs. Yes. One year, I think it was Hushman Zada wiped his shoes with a terrible towel. That's correct. You can't do that. You know where all the money from that terrible towel goes to? Every one of them that's sold? Myron Cope's charity, right? There you go, the children. Goes to the children. You wiped your feet with that. You didn't think you got to pay the football price. And that is what this weekend. I think we're going to get out of there with a win, and I'm going to say Steelers by three. And then you go to Denver. Maybe we have to take on Peyton Manning, Billy. No, I'm ready for that too. You know, I think. Uh, but, but you know me, I'm, I'm delusional. I will find the reason we're going to win in every game. I'm, I'm that much of a homer. Yeah. But I like. Here's what I like. Pittsburgh does not play well when we're the favorite. We just don't. When we're supposed to win, it's a nightmare. Uh, last week in Baltimore. Okay, perfect example. But when you tell us that you're banged up, you're not supposed to be here. Yeah. You're the away team. I don't know what happens. It's they just go into this working class mode and they don't go away. And I tell you, the way Ben has been playing out of his mind with those receivers, the one great thing about this offense this year, even with the loss of our running backs, is that they can score a bunch of points really quick and you don't know when it's coming, if it clicks. So I think it's the kind of team that could play on the road because of that offense. I think we can win in Denver. And i, I got to tell you, I'm going to predict right now Kansas yep. City is going to beat Texas. Mm -hmm. Kansas City is going to beat New England. And we're going to be looking at a double wild card AFC championship. Wow, that is bold stuff, Billy Gardell. That is I, just, I like Pittsburgh's offense, and I like the Chiefs' defense for the teams that are set up in the playoffs right now. New England is just too – their injury bug is bad too, man, but it's, it's all along their offensive line. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't give Brady any time, you can beat him. Now, man, I got a couple more questions for you. You heard Johnny yeah. Manziel was in Vegas saying apparently his name was Billy. Do you think he was trying to pass himself off as you, Billy Manziel, <laughs> well, Billy Gardell? Three or four more per Manny sandwiches before he can pass him <laughs> off as me. But, no, I don't know what he was doing. He was there in a wig, right? What was he doing? Apparently was, That's I, right up there when Pacino went to the Mets game with a wig on. Like, nobody was going to know who it was. Well, I know. Or it was like Bobby Valentine coming back into right. the uh, – <laughs> Yeah. To the dugout. Yeah, I don't know exactly what that was about. <laughs> and, and let's ask him the poll question. Did you hear Erlacher showed up with hair today, Billy? Did no. you hear about that? Brian Erlacher got the whole big hair restoration. He he's got the whole head of hair. There's a now, lot of. It, does it look good or does it look like those you know those crop fields? Um, I I think it looks good. You know, it it's. You're being kind. Just, it's no, it's just it's a couple of steps below Costanza wearing what he had years ago on Seinfeld. 
Um, but yeah, I uh, it looks good. I, here's my feeling: my corners are starting to creep back and it's yep. starting to thin on top. And when it starts to look like a public golf course, I'm shaving it off, and that's that. <laughs> so qu give him the poll question at Rich Eisenstein. All right, Billy. So, so I had a major problem with this. Uh, I'm a member okay. of the Bald Brotherhood. So I asked, okay. did Brian Urlacher violate the Bald Brotherhood code? Yes or no? Hmm. Now, see what I got. Can we be clear on that code before I give a ruling? Well, the, the rule. I think Brockman, go ahead. This he's is a your bald stance. man. He's been a proud bald man for ten plus years, and now all of a sudden he shows up with a rug on his on his head. That's a clear violation. It's not a rug. It's a it's a system. It's some sort of. No, he's got it dug in. That's not. He's not taping up. That's <laughs> like he got that drilled out. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So you got to give him a little bit of credit for sitting through that. Yeah. And he's also a very big man. I don't know if I want to tell him what to do. Exactly. I'm not sure I'd say this to his face. I mean, I can do this on a poll. Well, hopefully, we'll get yeah, him let's on. Let's just do it on a national broadcast. <laughs> yeah, it's no, fine. He was on Dan's show earlier. So um, you said a yes. Or you said you go no, right? Yes, no. You know, man, I I I don't know. I got to go. I don't think he violated it because he went and got. Yeah. He went through the painful process. He did. Now, if he's taping up, yeah, then he violates. <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference between taping up and drilling in. Yeah, I mean, they, they, he had a guy with a jackhammer up there re sewing that thing. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you put some time in there. Hey, Billy. If you're just taping something that looks like you should have yeah. a chin strap on your chin with it, then no, you, you violated the I love code. It. Billy Gardell, <laughs> world champion, reigning world champion of the Rich Eisen Show, Friends of Rich Celebrity <laughs> League, winning $5,000 for the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, PA, taken down Grandma Gloria Glassman and everybody else. Congratulations, <laughs> Billy. Thank you so much, and tell Manginello that I want to look like him once for an hour before I die. I got it. <laughs> we'll pass that along, Billy. Thank All you. Right. You take care. Be well, man. Happy New Year, you guys. Happy See New, you, Billy. Year, Happy New Year. Year. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.